Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're gonna look at the power chain rule. So if f is a differentiable function of u, and u is some differentiable function of x, then we can substitute y equals f of u into the chain rule formula, which gets us the formula d dx, so the derivative with respect to x of that f of u function. What we're gonna do there, very similar to the chain rule happening in here, we're gonna do the derivative of our function f at u, but then we're gonna multiply it by the derivative of u with respect to x. So if n is an integer and f of u is u being raised to some nth power, if we were to do the power rule, then when we're differentiating f, we would have to drop that n power down as a multiplier, but then subtract one from the power, now, if u is some differentiable function of x, then when we're doing this derivative, we can use the chain rule and extend this into what's called the power chain rule. So we have to remember that u is representing some function of x. So when we do its derivative with respect to x, because it has that power on it, we're first gonna do the power rule, drop the power down as a multiplier, but then subtract one from it. But then based on the chain rule, we're gonna multiply by the derivative of whatever that u inner function was. So in this example, we're gonna use that power chain rule to help us find a slope. So we're gonna find the slope of the line tangent to the curve y equals sine to the fifth of x at the point x equals pi over three. Now this sine to the fifth power of x, this actually means sine of x all being raised to the fifth power. So when we do the derivative of that, here's where the power chain rule is gonna come into play. The power chain rule says, drop the power down, leave the stuff on the inside the same, and then subtract one from the power. That's the first part. But then we're supposed to multiply by the derivative of the stuff that's on the inside. So we've got sine of x on the inside, so the derivative of that is the cosine of x. Now to rewrite this, we don't typically leave the powers outside of the parentheses. We would write this as five sine to the fourth of x times the cosine of x. So that's the first part, that's the derivative. But we wanna find the slope when x is pi over three. So if we think about the unit circle, pi over three has an ordered pair of one half and root three over two. So if we start plugging things into this derivative here, this is gonna be five times sine as the y value, so root three over two, but we have to raise that to the fourth power, and then cosine is the x value from the ordered pair, so that's a half. Working on simplifying this down, I'm gonna leave the five in front for right now. Now this fraction, root three over two being raised to the fourth power, when you have a fraction being raised to a power, you raise the top and bottom both to that power. So if we take root three and raise it to the fourth power, we get nine. If I take two and raise it to the fourth power, I get 16, and then we still have this one half on the back end. Now I'm gonna turn this five into five over one, multiplying across the tops of all of those fractions, we get 45 and then multiplying across the bottom of all those fractions, we get 32. So the slope at the x value of pi over three is 45 30 seconds. Now in this example, we're gonna show that the slope of every line tangent to the curve y equals one over one minus two x being raised to the third power is positive. So what we're gonna be doing is finding the derivative of this. Now, one thing before we get started, if we leave this in fraction form, then because it's a fraction, we would have to do the quotient rule in order to find its derivative. So what I'm actually gonna do is take this stuff on bottom and swing it up to the top of the fraction. But when I do that, my power becomes negative. So this becomes one minus two X raised to the negative third power. That's gonna be a whole lot easier to differentiate than trying to go through and do the quotient rule with all that stuff. So the power chain rule says drop that power down as a multiplier, leave the stuff on the inside the same, subtract one from the power, and then multiply by the derivative from the inside.
So the derivative of 1 is just 0. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. Now if we multiply some things together in here, taking this negative 2 times this negative 3 gives me 6 times this 1 minus 2x to the negative fourth power. And now what I'm going to do with this powered piece is drop it down to the bottom of the fraction so that we can turn that power positive again. So the 6 stays on top, the 1 minus 2x drops down to the bottom, and that negative 4 power becomes a positive 4 power. Now we're going to have to be a little careful about the x values that we're plugging in because we're dealing with a fraction in here. So in here, we don't want x to be 1 half because then the denominator of this fraction would be 0. But for every non 1 half number, if we look at what's happening in here, the top is always a positive number. And regardless of what we plug in on the inside, as long as it's not a half, if you raise whatever number's on the inside to an even numbered power, that will always turn positive as well. So if you ended up with a negative number inside of the parentheses, raise it to an even numbered power, it turns positive. So we have a positive thing on top being divided by a positive thing on bottom. So when that happens, if you take a positive number divided by a positive number, it always results in a positive answer. So that verifies that every single x value along this curve will have a positive slope. Now one more example we're going to take a look at is going to be with doing some trig stuff. And we said that when we're doing trig in calc, we always want to make sure that we're doing it in radians. And the derivatives for both the sine and the cosine were obtained under the assumption that whatever x values we were plugging in were being measured in radians and not in degrees. And using the chain rule can kind of help us recognize maybe why we would want to do things that way. Now for this example, let's just focus on the sine function. And when we're measuring things in radians, if we've got the equation y equals the sine of x, then the derivative of that is just the cosine of x. And if we were to do another derivative there, the second derivative of that y equation would be negative sine of x. And then the next derivative, the third derivative for that would be negative cosine of x. So we can fairly easily take a few derivatives, and we could even keep going with this, and it wouldn't get too complicated. But now if we start talking about things in terms of degrees, if your x angle is being measured in degrees, then we would have to convert it over into radians first before we could do its derivative. So we would need to take whatever that x value is, and to turn an angle from degrees into radians, you would have to multiply by pi over 180. So if we were looking at y equals the sine of some x degree angle, the first thing we would have to do is convert that degree into radians. So this is going to be the sine of whatever x is times pi over 180. Now, if we wanted to do that derivative, we would have to do the chain rule because now there's an extra function happening inside of those parentheses. We've got whatever x value we're plugging in being multiplied by pi over 180. So the chain rule says that we would have to take the derivative of the outside. So the derivative of sine is the cosine. We leave the inside stuff the same, at least to start with but then we have to multiply by the derivative of what's on the inside. Now pi over 180 is a constant times this x, so when we do the derivative in there, we just get pi over 180, and we would probably want to rewrite this as pi over 180 times the cosine of x times pi over 180. And then if I wanted to keep going, if I wanted to do another derivative, well, based on my derivative rules, I would have to keep that pi over 180 multiplier in front, do the chain rule with this cosine function. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of leave the stuff on the inside the same. But then we would have to multiply by the derivative of the inside again 
which is going to be another pi over 180. Now I can bump that pi over 180 to the front with that other one. So this is going to be pi over 180 squared. I'm also going to pull that negative to the very front as well. And then this is going to be the sine of x times pi over 180. So in terms of radians, it was fairly straightforward to do a first derivative, and then a second derivative, and then a third derivative. But when we're measuring in degrees, having that degrees to radian conversion in there makes things more complicated, because then we have to start using the chain rule with all that stuff. And then this pi over 180 really just kind of builds on itself as we keep doing more and more derivatives. So it's a lot more complicated working in degrees versus working in radians. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.